In this section, you are going to look at the organs associated with the alimentary canal. It means we are looking at all those organs that play a role in the proper functioning of the alimentary canal. One of such organs is the tongue. The tongue is found inside the mouth. And its functions, one, it pushes the food between the teeth for mastication. It means each time that we are chewing, the tongue always tries, although we are not aware of it actually. While we are chewing, it's a reflex action. The tongue always tries to push the food beneath or in between the upper and lower rows of teeth so that we can properly chew for mastication or chewing. Secondly, while the tongue is pushing the food, it's also rolling the food and mixing it with saliva for two purposes, so that the food can be moist for, easily, for easy swallowing and again, so that the food can be slippery for lubrication because saliva contains water to moisten the food and mucus to make the food slippery. Again, that's the second one. Again, it helps in forming the bolus or the ball of food. The ball of food, we call it the bolus. So the tongue, while it's rolling the food, it rolls it into a ball such that we swallow, we swallow balls of food always. And again, it assists with swallowing because the action of swallowing is such that when food is ready, properly churned, properly mixed, the bolus has been formed, the tongue pushes upwards and backwards such that the food is pushed to the pharynx at the back of the throat. Again, lastly, the tongue contain, contains taste buds. That's why we are able to perceive different types of taste of different foods. What you see here, these little things that look like goosebumps are taste buds. We have them at different regions for different types of taste on the tongue. And that makes the tongue an organ or an organ of taste because it's going to then send the information about the taste to the brain, the cerebrum of the brain. The second accessory organs are the teeth. And dentition is the type, the number, and the arrangement of teeth in an animal. Because we're looking at basically three types of animals here. We're looking at herbivores, we're looking at uh, carnivores, and omnivores. Basically, mammals. In all mammals, there are four types. In this case, we're looking at mammals. In mammals, there are four major types of teeth with different structure. And since they have different structure, hence they will have specialized functions. Okay, each one based on its own structure will have a special function. So we have incisors, which are basically for biting, canines basically for, for cutting, <clears throat> premolars and molars basically for grinding. Okay, you see they have different shapes or different structures. So here we have the different types of teeth with their functions. Their structure, the incisors, for example, are sisal shaped, means they're flattened at one end, but basically for biting and cutting. They're found at the front of the jaw, like the first two teeth that we find at the front of the jaw, both sides up and down. The canines are pointed or cone-shaped teeth used for piercing and tearing food that are found just after the incisors or next to the incisors. And the premolars are brought to their broad surfaces with cups that's like with furrows in it for grinding and crushing food that are found towards the back of the jaw, while the molars are similar to the premolars but they are just a bit wider and are also used for crushing or chewing or even grinding of food. When we look at the four types of teeth that we saw previously, when we look at those teeth in a mammalian jaw, we'll notice that they keep a specific <coughs> kind of order of, or specific arrangement inside each jaw. 
and that arrangement is what we refer to as the dental formula which is a series of numbers listing the types of each kind of teeth found in the upper half of the jaw and the lower half of the jaw it means when we establish a dental formula we are basically looking at what's found in the upper half and in the lower half of the jaw it means we divide the row of teeth like this into two this is for example the upper jaw and we'll only be looking at one half of that upper jaw to establish our dental formula and that's what we will have here this part i've drawn here could be represented by these figures up here that will be the upper jaw and the teeth are mirrored are mirrored to the lower jaw it means whatever whatever we find in the upper jaw will find the same arrangement in the lower jaw remember that i've not considered this side here i've only considered one side so it means we'll have this side here up and down that's times two that's what we have here and we'll make this whole arrangement times two again so that we represent what's going to be happening here up and down of this side here so that's how we develop what we call a dental formula if we look at the teeth here we'll see that here we have two Okay, I'm gonna consider only one part. We're considering just one part here. On this one part here, we have two incisors, one canine, two premolars, and three molars. That's what we have. This is the upper jaw of a human being as an example of an omnivore so we don't need to always have a whole diagram of the teeth like this one here we can just establish what we call a dental formula you will see that the figures have been calling so far i could decide since it's the upper jaw they'll be representing the upper figures that i have here With our upper figures that we had in the pre on the previous page there, we'll see there's our upper and lower set of teeth, the figures that we had. Like we said earlier, the two here represents two incisors. The one here represents one canine. The other two here represents two premolars and three here represents three molars now this is just the upper half because what we have what we then have down here will be the lower half of the same side the lower half they all mirror each other. If I have two up, I expect to have two down. If I have one up, I expect to have one down. If I have another two premolars up, I expect to have two premolars down. And three premolars up, I expect to have three, sorry, three molars up, I expect to have three molars down. That's in an adult human being. So that if we now want to add one half to another half, we're now putting everything together. This is the addition. This is what we will be having. Okay, this is the result. This is what we are going to be having. You will then see that we will have, like if, if I have to go back to the previous figures here, to this diagram, okay? I'm now adding everything together. Two up on one side, two down on one side. That gives me four. Okay. Let me do this. If I should say, I'm now considering only everything that is up. Remember, this is on one half of the jaw. 
So I'm considering everything up. Two up on the right side will also mean two up on the left side. That will give me four. Two down on the right side and also two down on the left side. That will also give me another four. So that means four in the upper jaw, four in the lower jaw. I add that together, I'm going to have eight. So it means in total, I'll have eight incisors. One canine up on the right, one canine up on the left. That gives me two up. One canine down on the right, one canine down on the left. That gives me another two canines down lower jaw. Two plus two gives me four. So adult humans, four canines. Three molars. Two up on the right, two up on the left. That gives me four in the upper jaw. Two down on the right, two down on the left. That gives me another four in the lower jaw. Four plus four should give me eight. Then I will have eight three molars. You can do the same with the molars. Three up on the right side and three up on the left side. That should give me six in the upper jaw mirrored with six in the lower jaw. Six plus six, that should give me 12 molars. Okay, so that is the dental formula of an adult human being. The next accessory structure for digestion is the salivary glands. There are three pairs of salivary glands which are found around the muscles of the mouth. We have the parotid pair, that's parotid gland. We have the submandibular gland and we have the sublingual gland. All three or all six salivary glands, because there are three pairs, are involved in secreting saliva. And this saliva is then transported from the glands to the mouth by short tubes or short pipes that we refer to as ducts. You will see that in grade 12, the, reason, if the fact that salivary glands use ducts means they will then be referred to as exocrine glands because in the body we have two types of glands. We have exo outside, endo inside, exocrine glands and endocrine glands. So as an exocrine gland or the salivary gland is an exocrine gland because it uses ducts to deliver its substances. Produce saliva so that the saliva can be used then to mix food like we previously explained.